So this is my CNC machine, uh, the last version, I hope so. Uh, I had three major versions. The first one was router, um, router made of wood with a Dremel as a spindle. And the second one was also router, but with uh, aluminium beams. It was kind of decent, uh, but it like really the rigidity required to cut aluminium so I cut some wood but not a lot and then I grew wood not I grew it I needed some more stiffer parts so I needed to make aluminium so the fastest thing cutting speed in my old one was like 500 millimeter per minute to get accurate parts more than that and the steppers start fucking losing steps so damn much losing steps anyway this one has a stepper motor with uh, two linear encoders one on the x one on y and with five micrometer resolution let me give you a closer look so the machine is uh, constructed with uh, chip management in mind um, because those chips can get anywhere the, the base itself is have holes in it you see here on the right side have, have holes that can pass the chip through to this bin it's uh, also a foam bin uh, that contains all of the, the chips as you can see here So I wanted them first to make it flood coolant, but uh, the enclosure was <coughs> shit. So I set up for a DIY mist coolant and this big chip tray. So let me show you. So this is the side of the machine. Here you can see that's the top. This is the sliding door. It slides up and down. This is the latch. Latch is up in this hole right here. And this is the X axis pillar. This is five centimeter thick. And the cables. And here is the electronics. So this is the Mesa box. And this is the stepper driver box, and this is the VFD box uh, with internal cooling. Uh, this box doesn't have, and this is the relay box that controls the mist relay and future outputs. Let me show you the electronics. So this is the Mesa cabinet. Uh, I, this is the most neat uh, box uh, of them. Uh, this is the encoder inputs using the DB9 connector connected to the 7i85S and uh, connected to a ribbon cable to the 7i96 Mesa card. Um, I had some more uh, time and money to spend on this cabinet to look uh, this nice. And also I used a TB25 connector to route all the steps and direction and the inputs. So let me show you. So here's the connectors I used. Uh, this, uh, this is the DB25 that carries all the step and direction signals. This is the power in. And this is the, the LAN that, that is connected to the computer and this mess is the stepper um, motors uh, drivers box so as you can see here i use these new connectors to connect all of them and did a shitty job on the inside uh, this is the old case i had so i purposed it for this drivers uh, there are three of them those are 220 drivers that accept 220 volts and uh, drive them without the power supply and this is the EM705 
uh, all, the, all those are Chinese uh, drivers. This is the 40, 48 volt power supply that supplies power to this driver. And this is the 24 of for general use, for input, outputs, this kind of thing. And this is, this thing wrapped in foil is the distribution board. And you can see here, those are the encoder inputs. This is the x-axis input, this is the y-axis input, and this is the rotor encoder. If we look here, this is the cabinet for my VFD. So this is a Delta ELVFD for my 2.2 kilowatt spindle and uh, I control it using a RS485 uh, RS protocol. Uh, it's really handy for measuring current and uh, setting RPM and all those things. And back here, this is my DIY mist cleaning system. So this is a normal filter using uh, that uses a normal uh, filtering cartridge, and I split the air which is uh, getting into it to two. One is uh, normal air, and the second goes with the line to the liquid and comes out here so I epoxied it with some uh, metal epoxy I think was the brand so here is the back of the machine uh, sorry for the shaky camera but it's really cramped in here I can't get my tripod so down here I have the air supply the air supply comes from the other room and is fed in here. That's the first step regulator that filters out all the oil and junk. And here's the second uh, regulator that goes to the misty system, mist system. And this is the solenoid that controls the mist. And this is just the handheld uh, air gun. Let's talk accuracy. This machine can hold 10 micrometer, at least my resolution of my burn digital calipers. So I made some good design, good design choices and some really, really, really shitty ones. We'll talk about them later, but uh, for starters, uh, I have uh, some normal box codes, the C71, the Chinese crappy ones, and I have those bearing box, also crappy ones, but I changed the bearing inside them to uh, a SKF one, not, not a thrust bearing, but uh, a roller bearing, and put a little uh, shimmy stock in between uh, each bearing so they can, I can preload them. It's not a good practice, it's not a good idea even, but uh, it worked well for me because I had compensation with the linear uh, encoder. But the thing I didn't take into account was the resolution of my encoders. The resolution of my encoders was not that good. 5 micrometer is enough to make a decent motion. Uh, what by motion is smooth motion, no jerkiness, no these things um, that can hold the uh, okay accuracy for me at least um, but the one micrometer ones would be really good so I recommend if you want to make the same uh, the same closed loop system you want to buy the one micrometer one the offer really good uh, resolution to for the PID loop. Uh, speaking of the PID loop, it was a kind of a pain to tune. Uh, at first, I used a rotary encoder to encode the y-axis. That was a bad idea uh, because it, um, it compensated for if the motor lost steps or the steps were not accurate. Of course, I'm microstepping, but if the steps are not accurate enough, 
but it didn't account for the backlash in the book school, minor as it is, and the why, especially, uh, didn't, uh, it didn't take into account the play due to the ball bear, do the roller ball bearing and the, and the fixed support of, of the ball screw. Some things like that. So I bought a, a one for the Y axis, and the X axis had a lot of backlash. So if you're thinking to buy those linear encoders to compensate for backlash, that's a really bad idea because PID Loops doesn't like a moment sudden changes in in velocity. Let's say. Um, the, back, the following error in my y-axis is something like 10 micrometers and that's really good um, but for my x-axis the following error is something like 3, 3, 30 micrometers because of the backlash if you get a bolt screw with uh, two nuts to compensate for backlash it will give you a better, uh, better PID response Okay, you might say, why are you putting an encoder, a rotary encoder, with a linear encoder? In theory, it should give better results. In theory, anyway. But when I connected both to my machine, set up the take P, uh, P and D only, the um, loops for the rotary encoder and the I for linear encoder, it did some really weird things. So the machine just finished milling uh, this piece for the third time because the first time it was off, it was over uh, 30 microns and the y axis was, was oversized by 20 microns, I think. And the second test, I and the second test, third test, I tried, I tested some things. Uh, I got to think. The end metal started from this side and ended in this side. So there is a curve here and the path. The most error will be here and the I term it was uh, at the time was really low. We take out we take it out. Here I measured uh, over by 20 micron. Here was exactly as I programmed it to be. I discovered that um, that the problem was the I term in my PID loop after that second test. The third test, the test is the third test was spot on. My I term was, I cranked up the I term to something like 40 uh, and my P term was 40 to, for both of both axes. And here, let me show you the finish. This is the finish. 
this one this top one it's a bit reflective uh, I didn't finish it with the mist coolant because I thought there was some kind of interference because I had this problem in the past Make sure ways are clean. There we go. Okay, let me here. This is the x axis. Exactly zero. This is the y axis. So when I got these results, I was really happy, but that excitement didn't last long. Uh, because I started measuring the part closer and found some really weird problems uh, Let me show you the part is really okay. It's 10 over Here one under but when you measure it from the start of the cut because the, the cutter moves like this clockwise There's 30 micrometers error and that uh, and that coincides with the error in the following error when the start of the cut there is a spike of error in the uh, follow and the follow in the joint zero following error this is the y and this is the x so that was a bit weird i fixed the machine i thought everything was fine but it didn't got fixed it got really worse so i checked the this 30 micrometers following error and i i thought at first it was backlash it didn't it wasn't backlash um after i advanced the axis in a, let's say positive position and then measure again in the positive position so the backlash was already out didn't change uh, directions there was still that spike the 30 micrometer spike error it was the bolt screw nut it was loose it wasn't tightened it i think it got loose and the set screw was out so i tightened it put the set screw back and tested again and Lo and behold, there was a problem in the x-axis much bigger. It was giving me 50 microns over, not 30 anymore. So I got to thinking and thought the problem was my, in my linear encoder. This one. This was the old one. This linear encoder. It was sitting at the top. As you can see here. But that wasn't the problem. So after more testing, so after more testing and changing the linear encoder, um, my linear uh, scale, my linear carriages are not that good. They are not the precision grade or, or anything, but um, they might be the problem. Let me show you how I thought there was a problem. Okay, let's imagine this is the linear our linear encoder. And this is the uh, x-axis carriage, okay? This moves in the x-axis like this. And this is the encoder which counts it. So if it moves like this, exactly, let's say it exactly 60, okay? That should, the tip of the cutter should exactly go 60 also. But the, there is a play in the, linear uh, carriages so maybe the, it's tilted to the right or to the left a bit and that makes a lot of problems so when it cuts the cutter deflects so if it's cutting uh, inwards the cutter deflects like this so it deflects like this that's exact exaggerated of course so it counts to 60 but the cutter is not at 60, it's less than 60. 
So when it when it's when it forces cutting that way, so it deflected that way. When it gets to sixty, it's also oversized. So you, the right side and the big side would be oversized like this. So the solution I thought of is to move the linear encoder between the two linear cartridges. And lo and behold, that fixed the problem. Let me show you. This is my new part. Of course, uh, this is several days later. As you can see, here you can see my reflect my finger reflection. It's I'm really happy with the finish. The finish of the of this circular bore. Here. It's one over and here. It's one over. That could be the problem of the cutter or maybe the spindle, but it, it's consistent error in the two axes, so I can get it out with uh, compensation in the Linux CNC. As you can see, the error here still is zero and here it's also zero so let's measure the bore this is uh, 25 and here also 25 and here also 25 and here also 25 so one thing to take in mind if you want to implement this system in your uh, CNC mill you need to take account that the faster you go the the worse the interpolation will go uh, interpolation is uh, when the x axis and the y axis moves in the same time so this is interpolated you have to go slow so i drop down the feet to 500 millimeters per minute to cut it really uh, with this accuracy. So let's talk some uh, future videos I'm planning to do. The next video, hopefully, uh, would be a tutorial about how to set up the linear uh, encoders, how to align them with each axis, uh, how to wire them, because as I found, uh, every manufacturer of linear encoder uh, has their special wiring on the DB9 and how to wire them in the how. It was a bit uh, hard to get the information at first because the information is there and the and the Linux, uh, Linux CNC forms are very helpful but uh, the information is not in one place so you can't just do this 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 and you're up and running. So I'm, I'm, try, I'm gonna try to do that. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Peace.